Your Excellency, on the issue of um, the Kenya um, Oral History Center, Kosh. and Kosh and the great work that they're doing, we commend them. This, this, this actually, uh, this particular initiative um, aligns very well with what we are trying to do around celebrating Kenya's, I mean, 60 years of Kenya's diplomacy at the end of this year, part of which includes documentation of some of that journey. And not to the depth that Kosh proposes to do, but a broad scan, a broad overview of it will be, will be captured. And so it's an area that we want to immediately indicate our interest to collaborate with uh, and in and to be able to walk that journey uh, together. Uh, we are happy to nominate um, an officer uh, to work with you around, um, you know, around what the needs are at this, at this present moment. Um, your Excellency, with your permission, I would like to request that you allow me to set up a joint committee of um, uh, the State Department and the uh, former retired ambassador association uh, to tease out the issues that we need to both work on and then to report to you um, in, in another month or so. If people in this room have given that kind of service and uh, when the owner's role comes out and none or very few uh, identified. I think it means we have to do some homework uh, to, to show greater respect and appreciation uh, for the work that uh, you have put in um, for, for this country. Some of the issues you're raising here will eventually require or require fundamental support from Parliament. Parliament allocates resources based on what the executive uh, uh, requests or puts as propositions. So it has become much clearer that unless we, we tell our story to Parliament in a structured and organized manner, we shall have problems in raising resources to support foreign service and to deal with some of the concerns uh, that you have raised. This morning I made a commitment that we are working on a sessional paper uh, which we want to share and have debated in Parliament so that policy issues and issues that have been hanging because there is no clear framework to resolve this I'm sure the technocrats listening to me, you'll now understand why I have been a thorn in the flesh, pounding regularly, saying that for us to help in turning out the issues, we must engage and have a sessional paper debated by Parliament, approved by Parliament, where we can put a case for the resources that we shall need going into the future. We should not have a foreign policy that is confined to the corridors of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We must have a foreign policy that is owned by the people of Kenya through their representatives, through parliament, and therefore they will be able to allocate more resources for us to tackle the concerns that you have. And we are doing it not for us, not for me, but for others. So it is absolutely essential that we pick up from here uh, and we be able to, to do that. So I, I will do uh, just one thing to assure you that I'll work very, very closely with you and we will then report good progress amongst ourselves uh, and going forward. I will also be calling on you from time to time on these issues. Um, I was trying to imagine, as you are talking, today in this room, uh, there is a concentration of uh, serious 
high voltage <laughs> diplomatic knowledge in this room, uh, diplomatic and public experience in this room. Uh, if you are to count in terms of the years put, uh, maybe you'll be running into thousands of years of service uh, collectively, of public service and of diplomacy. And that uh, reservoir of resource, surely we should not allow uh, it to just disappear. It must be there uh, so that others can stand on your shoulders. Uh, to be able to move forward and make Kenya's uh, role and image and purpose much better uh, for our own citizens and for the continent uh, of Africa.